Joseph Vaughn was our first African-American undergraduate student at Furman. There was an incredible amount of pressure on early um, African-American students because this needed to work. It's just kind of like an inherent knowledge, like being a black student on campus, you kind of like find out somehow like who Joseph Vaughn is. Being the first kind of set the stage for a lot of our, not just our black students, but other students of color on Furman's campus to have an opportunity to, to, um, to have a Furman education. The story of how the South Carolina Baptist Convention delayed and tried to obstruct Joseph Vaughn's matriculation to Furman is a very interesting one. During the 50s and early 60s, in the aftermath of the landmark Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court case, most Southern high schools, colleges, and universities resisted the implications of racial integration. Private denominationally affiliated colleges, of course, had to contend not only with the with federal legislation, they also had to contend with their denominational politics. So Furman, at this point in time in the 1960s, was affiliated with the South Carolina Baptist Convention. The South Carolina Baptist Convention, made up of ministers and lay leaders from across the state, reflected the social conservatism of the former Confederate states. And quite frankly, racism was the dynamic at work. Initially, Furman, like many other Southern colleges, tried to avoid direct racial integration. These cases, of course, went through the court system and judges court ordered the desegregation of these historically white institutions. In the early 1960s, a federal court ordered Clemson to integrate its student body. So as that was going on, Furman began to move in the same direction, in part because of the leadership of its provost at the time, Dr. Francis Bonner. Frank Bonner, who had long served as, as dean and, and um, in various other roles in the Furman administration, was serving as interim president. And he was pretty forceful about, about pushing this through. He went over to Sterling High School in Greenville and, and met with some of the teachers and the guidance counselor and administrator, and they collectively hand-selected Joe Vaughn to be the first African-American student at Furman. In the midst of that process, Furman was searching for a new president, and it fastened on Dr. Gordon Blackwell. And Dr. Blackwell said, yes, I'm willing to come to Furman as president, but only if Furman agrees to integrate its student body. So Furman is in a very difficult position. They actually have a student waiting to come to Furman, and the trustees were in a position where they actually had to consider voting down the recommendations of its parent institution and the institution which actually placed them in, in these roles. So they took this very, very seriously. Frank Bonner gave a very impassioned plea for the trustees to defy the convention. I said to the trustees, you should do this, not because the faculty favorite, not because the students favorite, and not because it's the Christian thing to do. You should do it because it's right, the right thing to do. Ultimately, that's what they chose to do, and Joe Vaughn entered in the beginning of the next semester in 1965. It was the same day that Gordon Blackwell began his term as president as well. One might imagine that many young people in that situation, being the first African-American at a university, 
might close up, might be very shy, might move to the periphery. Um, Jovan was just the opposite. He was gregarious, he was outgoing, he had a wonderful smile. People loved him. Lillian brought Flemmy, who was one of our first African-American female students to graduate from Furman. She said, um, if you met Jovan, you met life. <sighs> the world is, was a better place because of Jovan. Jovan was a very unique individual. He was God's gift to positiveness. He always saw the glass half full. My impression of him is that he was incredibly clever and, and was just a people magnet. Very funny, very gracious, and graceful. You know, when you're 18 years old, uh, you know, going to college is, is kind of scary anyway. And it was, um, sometimes it's a little disheartened because you didn't see anyone who looked like you. I haven't lived like any of his experiences and I can't even like begin to imagine what type of like stress or anxiety or even like excitement that he could have had. Joe was involved in everything. He even became a cheerleader because he thought the cheers for Furman were too dry and too Christian-like. <laughs> so, and so, and so Joe tried to bring new life to it, um, that he wasn't just a student who was of a different culture. Seeing the impact that he had on the Greenville community is really reaffirming and like lets me know that like I can find my own way. He was one of the more vocal members of the Southern Student Organizing Committee. He talked openly about his racial identity. He was firm enough in his um, understanding of who he was that it would not bother him to be a symbol of diversity. He not only represented African Americans well, but became a leader among the student body. He just was just this warm, amazing spirit to, to be around and cared about people and wanted to use his position to um, make changes on campus and ended up staying in the Greenville community to teach for several years. Um, and I think is someone that is a really important part of Furman's history. I think that Joseph was actually made for Furman. I must candidly say to you that it was not without a little bit of anxiety that I came to Furman. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to find. But I was equally determined that I was coming to Furman to be Jovan student, not Jovan black student. It shows that people of various backgrounds can live together peacefully and can serve as a model for the rest of this country. Furman should continue on this course of social justice that made my experience here what it was. Thank you. needed Jovan because there was a lot of intellectuals here just withdrawing from the world. He showed them that they need to come out. If you're so smart, do something for somebody. That was Jovan.